Hello, I'm Kim Walker of Handmade Apothecary and today we're going to be talking about Valerian or Valeriana officinalis as the scientific name is. It's this plant here. I'm going to show you some ID identification features and tell you how herbalists use it and then we're about to be joined by Rebecca Lazarou of Lazar Plant Scientist who will tell you about the chemistry and how it's used in the body. So here's a Valerian plant. It's actually mid-July now so they're getting quite advanced. They've gone mainly to seed. Down here we have some flowers and oh, a little bumblebee as well. Bees really love this plant. I'm not sure if it helps them sleep well or not. But here you go, we've got these little tube-like flowers. Five petals in a tube. If you're to smell this, it's a bit of a marmite smell, so some people love it, some people hate it. Some people say it smells like sweaty socks, but it's very mild. Um, I kind of like it, it's an interesting smell. Uh, the flowers are generally white, sometimes pale pink. In fact, this one, you can kind of see, is a bit pale pinker. We've got a round ridge stem. And the leaves here are composed of many, many leaflets. So this is one leaf with lots of leaflets. A very distinct kind of limish green, kind of deeply veined with these irregular tooths at the or lobes at the edges. Um, and when it goes to seed, you'll see here, it makes these lovely little parachutes. A bit like a dandelion. But it's not related to dandelion. They kind of look like those little, those little things in um, Avatar. Now, in the Mrs. Grieve, who's one of our recorders of herbal use in the 19th and... Um, early 20th century she recommended that you take the flowers off because herbalists use the root of this plant and if you allow a plant to go to flower um, the goodness from the root leaves and it becomes a small withered root so she suggests as you see it flowering go into bud you pick them off and then at the end of summer you would dig it up and find the roots and it's the root that really have that big big strong scent that I was talking about that's mildly that mildly appears in the flowers. Some say it smells like sweaty socks uh, and really don't like it. Um, but I tell you what, cats love it. So don't leave it out on a shelf or in your uh, on your worktop if you have a cat because you'll come back and it'll be all over the floor. Um, also, rats are said to like it. So the Pied Piper of Hamlin, which is an old uh, story about a town that's played with rats, the town of Hamlin, and a piper comes along and pipes them all away. They say he had his pockets full of um, valerian root and that's why they followed him away. So herbalists will use this plant mainly for its sedative properties. It's one of our famous plants that's used for insomnia. So the root is used um, in teas to make uh, people go to sleep. Um, a, an important point about this is we often say that we make teas or infusions with hot water just for uh, flowers and leaves. If you've got harder, woodier plant parts like seeds, roots or barks, then you decoct them, which is a gentle simmer. However, in valerian, that's the one time you don't do it uh, because heat is said to destroy the chemical and traditionally it's just made into tea. So when you dig up the root, you uh, wash it slice it into very small pieces and dry it and then those small pieces will allow you to infuse it easier. So to make a tea all I would do would be to get the dried root, uh, put a good heaped teaspoon in a cup, cover it with boiling water and then cover it over so it can infuse really really well. Um, but now over to Rebecca who's going to tell you about the chemistry. Hey guys, just going to talk you through the pharmacology of valerian. So its main active compounds are sesquiterpenoids, valerianic acid and valipotriot. Sorry, I always find it hard to pronounce that. But basically, it's, it's used commonly to treat anxiety and insomnia. And the way it works, it works on the nervous system. As mentioned in another video, it, the nervous system works by fire and electricity and it's what controls our thoughts and our emotions and also our muscle movements. Um, so it's really, really important for relaxation and it works by firing electricity and when too much electricity is fired, you get really anxious, you get really jittery. Um, but we have a natural neurotransmitter, my favourite neurotransmitter, um, which calms us down. It's called gamma amino butyric acid. Again, excuse my pronunciation. It's short, shorthand, it's called GABA. 
Now what GABA does is it slows down that firing of electricity, it makes you feel really, really chilled out and calm um, and it slows down our movement, etc. In fact, alcohol stimulates the release of GABA, but too much GABA, which is why you get slurry speech, which is why you can't balance yourself because your muscles are so relaxed that you can't actually um, control them. But you don't need to worry about that with valerian because you'd need ridiculously high doses so uh, don't worry you won't slur your speech or, or trip over but basically yeah valerian stimulates your GABA receptors and it helps you feel really chilled out and helps with um, insomnia and furthermore it's also um, as well as stimulating GABA it also um, stops the reuptake of GABA as well so it's in your system for longer so you reap more of the benefits of it. Now studies have shown that valerian is helpful for getting people to sleep quicker and improving quality of sleep so people wake up less and there was a, a meta-analysis done of 16 different studies on around 1,100 patients overall and it was shown to be effective for insomnia however it must be noted that the quality of studies wasn't that good um, and that the dosages that people took and the amount of time they took it for varied greatly so we can't say you know scientifically that is the best evidence out there however i know when it take i take it it knocks me out and it's helped a lot of people as well so yeah oh and another thing that it's really helpful for as well it's known as a spasmolytic herb um so what basically that means is it stops the contraction of your muscles as I mentioned, which is helpful for pain in many cases, especially menstrual cramps, because that's caused by your uterine muscles contracting. And when you stop them contracting, it helps with, uh, with the pain. So definitely something to try if that's something that you suffer with. 